Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Dr. Abdurrahmi here again and today in this video we will discuss about ductility, malleability, recrystallization temperature, cold working and examples of cold working. Before the start of the topic, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe it for the updates of the new videos. So now we will start from the ductility. Basically, ductility is defined as it is a measure of a material's ability to undergo significant plastic deformation. Plastic deformation in which way? In a tensile way. Which means to be drawn or stretched. To be drawn or stretched before rupture or breaking. Now ductility can be expressed as percentage elongation. As, uh, as the material is undergoing plastic deformation in a tensile way, so it should have sufficient tensile strength for the ductility. Now the malleability. Malleability is defined as it is a measure of material's ability to undergo significant compression which means it requires compressive strength before rupture or breaking. Another definition is physical properties of metals that defines the ability to be hammered, pressed or rolled. These are the three methods by which you can compress a material or metal into thin sheets without breaking now the cold working cold working is also called work hardening cold working involves mechanical shaping of the metal at relatively low temperatures taking advantage of the high values of ductility and malleability that is why it is so crucial to know about ductility and malleability to understand the topic of cold working Properly, cold working affects properties of metals. Yes, it is that cold working can affect properties of metal, but how? Cold working not only produces a change in microstructure with dislocations becoming concentrated at grain boundaries, but also change in grain shape. So, as there is a change in grain shape, from equiaxed to fibrous as we cold work the metal the equiaxed structure of grain becomes fibrous so we will have a strong hard plus a metal with higher yield stress that's how Cold working affects the physical and mechanical properties of a metal. So now what we conclude from the last part of the video is cold work metal is hard, strong with the higher values of yield stress and the lower value of ductility. Why? Because ductility is the ability as I mentioned earlier and every ability has its limit. So, the potential for more work hardening is reduced. That's why the cold work metal has the low values of ductility. Now, we will talk about recrystallization temperature. Basically, recrystallization temperature is defined as the temperature below which work hardening is possible. This temperature is termed as recrystallization temperature you don't get it easily by the definition that what is recrystallization temperature so here I am going to discuss it with the diagrammatic representation so now look at this first diagram uh, it has a solid metal block and we are giving it heat so as we have given the heat to the block of metal, it has melted in the figure B. So, this is now the molten metal and we are still applying the heat. And now, thirdly, in the figure C, 
we are not applying the heat and we allowed the molten metal to be cooled as the mo molten metal is about to cool we can see here the crystal growths and in figure D that is the last figure crystal growths continues and it finally form an equiax structure of a metal block when the metal is cooled at certain temperature now the this temperature at which crystal growth is completed and we get the equiax grain structure this particular temperature at which we get this is recrystallization temperature now the examples of cold working first of all cold working is used in the formation of wires through drawing in which uh, metal is allowed to go through circular dies with the continuous reduction in the diameter then the bending of wires or clasps during the construction and alteration of appliances and thirdly the swagging basically swagging is used to convert metal into sheets so the swagging of a stainless steel denture basis these three are the examples of cold working in dentistry now as we know cold work metal changes its uh, equates green shape to fibrous form basically this process can be reversed but how the answer is softening heat treatment what happens in softening heat treatment is we heat the fibrous grain structure above the recrystallization temperature then it revert back to its original form that is equiax structure but now this metal will have a lower value of yield stress and it will be soft and it will have the higher values of ductility because the metal has increased its potential to be cold worked but the softening heat treatment has one adverse effect that is if this temperature the temperature above the recrystallization temperature is maintained for sufficient time then what happens is atomic diffusion occurs which will lead to grain growth as we know that coarser the grain the weaker the material and in the end uh, i would like uh, to tell you guys that cold working produces uh, internal stresses in the metal so now to eliminate these internal stresses what we do is low temperature heat treatment which is also referred as stress relief annealing